What's going on my dudes, One Step here with the ultimate beginner's guide to multiverses. Starting with the beginners and the basics, playing around with the intermediate stuff, and even touching on some advanced things as well, I'm showing you everything you need to know to up your game in multiverses. Subscribe here for more fighting game and multiverses content, and let's get right into it. The basics of multiverses. Multiverses is a platform fighter. You can jump, you can move, basically around the entire screen, as you might already know, just kind of messing around with the game itself. And on a very tuned down level, it's pretty basic. And what I mean by that is you have attacks like side attack here and when you're not moving you have neutral attacks you press the attack button while you're not moving you have down attack meaning you're gonna do an attack that's separate when you're holding down and every character follows these mechanics so they'll have you know forward attack they'll have down attack neutral attack up attack and the same thing applies to their specials because we have attacks and we got specials so we got side special and some of these moves you can charge I mean you can hold them to do either greater knockback more damage different properties gain armor stuff like that so rather than just do side special we can hold side special and as you saw in joker's case here the rocket goes a bit further and those same things are applied when you're in the air so in the air we got down attack and as you can see you can do that down attack pretty close to the ground so you're doing your air down attack kind of on the ground like this now there are some characters where their moves on the ground both attacks and specials will be the same in the air so for joker for an example our neutral ground attack is the card throw that's going to be the same in the air as well with neutral just attack card throw but there are a lot of characters that have a lot of attacks and specials that will change depending whether you're on the ground or in the air so keep an eye on that and for joker our side special on the ground is the rocket and in the air the side special is this twirling cane so that can make for a lot of mix and match moves and specials going from the ground going into the air charging your ground attacks you get the idea there are some passive abilities that some characters do have as well for example batman is one of the very few characters that can dodge upwards so just for an example not all characters can do that so every character has not only their special moves but also special abilities as well another small example Ari will do more damage to her opponent when she hits them from the back not all characters do that but she does so we have our attacks we have our air attack special specials air specials characters passive abilities and how they play into their gameplay and their strategy and that all takes some time and some practice like messing around see how the character plays how their attacks maybe go into their specials stuff like that other things to keep in mind for the game you get two jumps in the game so you can't do more than double jumps and you can do two specials in the air as well so you can jump special jump special from there you get no more jumps and no more specials but you can do any amount of attacks you want so if we jump special and then jump special we can still attack from here we just couldn't jump again or do a special again. And that's why for a quick example, the perk Airwalker is so good. Neutral dodging in the air creates this platform beneath you, resetting you, allowing you to do your specials again. So you can jump up special, jump up special, Airwalker up special again. A lot of perks like that, as you can see, heavily affect the game, your possible game plan slash strategy. We have our attacks, we have specials, we have jumps, we got air specials, we got perks even a little bit. There are more mechanics beyond that, like dodges and parry, dodge cancels that can continue combos. So let's break it down quick and easy for you the dodge button allows you to dodge literally dodging attacks so the attacks will go right through you you can side dodge like going this way side dodge in the air you can down dodge you can up dodge but now you can see we're out of dodges from our dodge meter here we can't dodge anymore now if you try to dodge you still will move but you're not gonna actually dodge anything and that dodge meter is shared through your entire move set so it doesn't matter if you dodge on the ground or in the air or not you can dodge and then you can jump and then dodge again down dodge now you might have heard me said dodge cancel what does that mean dodge cancel allows you to do an attack and rather than recover from that attack you dodge most of the time side dodge allowing you to go into the next move a lot quicker so for an example we can side attack neutral special side dodge and then side attack again and continue the combo where normally that combo would stop after the neutral special and here's how that might look now that can take a bit more time and practice to really get down those dodge cancels, yes. But it's way worth it if you can get it down, especially doing ground combos into air combos. Cause you can do stuff like this. We have another big mechanic in the game called parry. And before I go over it, here's how it looks. So as you can see, we neutral dodge. So it has to be a neutral dodge. And this can happen both in the air and on the ground. You time it right and you neutral dodge at the perfect moment. You then parry your opponent, stunning them, allowing you for a free combo. Uh, again, I have to emphasize that's gotta be at the perfect timing because if you miss, sure you'll dodge, but you're not gonna get that parry up. Or you're gonna be too late and dodge too late, so you're still gonna get hit. You can also dodge projectiles, but that doesn't actually stun the opponent, but it's something that you can do. So neutral dodge, any attack at the right time, parry and punish your opponent. And then there are characters like Joker that just have a built-in parry. 
But every character has their thing, right? We got dodges, we got parries. Now there's another mechanic called armor. You might see a lot of it on tanks like Superman, Wonder Woman, but other characters like LeBron and Shaggy also have moves that have armor on them, allowing them to take a hit, go through it and still hit you back. You can see it by the glowing yellow like this. Okay, this skin is actually yellow, so I'm gonna change skins. So now that we're Super Santa, we'll do up attack and hold it. See how we're glowing yellow? That means we have armor on that move. And here's how going through armor, like going through a hit, here's how that looks. Yeah, exactly that. We essentially just armor through a hit and thus hit our opponent back. You still take damage from that hit you took, but you have no knockback. Now you might be wondering, that's so overpowered, how can I go through armor? Well, I think almost every character has a move that will break armor or essentially just go right through it. And those moves are indicated by a purple glow. So for an example, Superman's down attack here can also break armor himself, and this move is glowing purple, you can see there. In Batman's case, it's also his down attack as well. We're gonna glow purple. That move will then break armor. Or again, just go right through it. I can't showcase or explain every character's armor breaking move, but I think most of them, all of them do have one. Mess around the character and find it. Or there are characters like Shaggy that have a multi-hitting attack and those multi-hits are pretty fast. So even though they don't essentially break armor in of itself, they hit so much and so fast that they will usually break armor before you get hit like this. Yeah, that move will usually break armor. You even got perks in the game that help you get armor or even help you break armor. So your armor is, uh, is a pretty big part of the game. And you wanna learn how to combat that because you're gonna run into it more often than you might think. Another mechanic a lot of people don't really care to explain is the knockback. It is a platform fighter. So, you know, we're, we're not, we don't have a health bar. The point of this kind of fighting game is to ring out your opponent outside of the stage. So how do you do that? We can hit our opponent all day, but where does the, uh, where does the knockback come from and what is knockback? Back. Knockback is the amount of like how far you'll be knocked back from taking a hit and that amount that how far you will go that knock back is increased the higher damage you take. So Shaggy right here is at 64 health or 64% you might hear some say. The higher that is the more knockback you are going to take. So if we do charged up attack you'll see here it's pretty decent knockback. But if Shaggy's at 95 health or 95% damage our charged up attack is going to do a lot more knockback even kill but you'll see how much knockback they take when he's at like let's say seven percent or seven health it's not very much even when fully charged so the point of this whole platform fighter is to attack and hit your opponent as much as you can get their health as high as you can so they take more knockback to then ring them out and there are perks that decrease knockback or increase knockback there are mechanics like weaken that also increase the knockback your opponent takes and i feel like a lot of beginners a lot of new players are kind of confused by that concept of like wait where's my health bar i'm used to like you know a street fighter or mortal Kombat. this is just how platform fighters typically work so we've gone through a lot of the basics a lot of the uh how to play the game or like what's in the game what to be aware of but how do you play how do you fight how do you do combos for an example well, a lot of characters will have a three or higher hit attack combo by simply just holding side and doing attack so for joker here we can just hold sideways and then just do attack three times and a lot of characters have a combo like that, but how can you do more? Well, you can go side attack, side attack, and then do maybe another attack, like an up attack or a down attack, or maybe like a side special. So side attack, side attack, side special, and that goes together. Or side attack, side attack, up attack. And that right there is the foundation of combos. That's kind of where you want to start doing stuff. The higher your opponent's health, the more knockback they're going to take. So sometimes if your opponent is at a higher percentage, that combo might not work because you're going to knock them back too far for the next move to actually hit. So your combos are gonna vary throughout the entire fight. And a lot of times you might be trying to hit your opponent in the air. They're gonna fall down into, let's say a trap you have or a charge attack you might be doing. That's not necessarily a true combo in the sense that you comboed into that, but you're running a combo in the sense that you're doing an attack to put them in the air and trapping them in the sense they're gonna have to fall into your trap or your attack. That can, you know, kind of be a combo, right? Like Superman can then freeze your opponent, slowing you down, then hitting you. That's kind of a combo in a sense. Combos are very different in platform fighters like this because you're not doing typical strings like let's say triangle square square triangle you're just doing attacks until like put your opponent in the air jump attack again you typically want to start trying to build combos in your brain and getting used to how they feel by doing side attack a couple times into anything else seeing what has really good kill power what goes together really well maybe what goes together no matter what percentage your opponent is at like our opponent right now is at 100 health and our side attack twice into side special still connects 
Whereas sometimes some characters, their side attack and their side special might not always connect if their opponent is too high of a percentage. Now let's talk about one of the most unique things about multiverses. It is duos and solos. Multiverses is a platform fighter that's kind of built around duos or 2v2. And how we know that's because a lot of characters, if not all of them, have either one move or more that benefit an ally. So I'm playing Joker right here. I'm fighting Shaggy, right? My game plan is gonna be very different fighting just one opponent and having no ally just doing this 1v1 fight. And if I am playing 2v2s and I have an ally to worry about and I have two opponents, there are some characters that perform this better in my opinion. Like Steven here is a great 2v2 character. He's awesome in 1v1, sure. But for an example, he can have this block here. And as you see, he blocks for his ally as well. So if they're just getting pummeled, he can just block for them in an instant. And that's a huge ally perk. So there's some characters that have really good perks for allies, thus being a good character for 2v2s, whereas some might be more focused on just doing solo attacks, solo fights. Nothing wrong with that. They're just characters you might want to be aware of. Like, okay, yeah, they're really good in duos. That doesn't mean they're bad in 1v1s or solos. They just have things that really benefit an ally. One thing about any fighting game that people really struggle with is finding a main character. Who do they mainly want to play? Who fits their play style? Who do they like playing as? And I can't tell you who to main. I can't tell you who to fight. But what I can tell you is Multiverses has a kind of a class system. So Shaggy here is a bruiser and Superman is a tank. Arya is an assassin and Joker is a mage. So we have different classes and every character has their moves and make them special. Yes, but the classes do kind of dictate around that. Like because Superman is a tank, he can hit harder. He's a bit slower, sure, but he can hit harder and take more hits, especially compared to assassins like Marvin. Personally, I'd recommend having a main uh, from at least two or more classes. Like my mage main is Joker. My bruiser main is Batman. My tank is Superman and my assassin is Arya. Now I'm not saying you have to do this, but it does help you find a couple other characters that you might actually end up enjoying that you never thought you would had you not tried them in the first place. I hate to say it, but the key to finding a main is playing as many characters as possible or just like clicking with the character themselves. Like I love Batman. I love Batman. This whole wall is like for DC and video games. So I already love DC anyways. So I just love the character Batman. So I really wanted to play Batman. And that made me enjoying his moveset a lot better. There are a lot of people that really just grew up loving the Gremlins. So they automatically just love Gizmo. So start there. You know, what characters do you already enjoy? Mess around with them. If if you don't like their play style, try some other characters. Definitely find at least one main, if not a couple, because every character has their weakness. And if you're fighting a character that is really going against your weakness, you kind you probably need to switch it up a little bit. So I recommend having at least two or three mains. If you can find them in different classes, even better. Not only do we have other fighters and different classes, but we also have different perks that go for other characters. Like every character has their signature perks that can change the way they play. And we have other perks that can, again, you know, give you armor or help you break armor, help you do more damage, or maybe ignite your opponent and do a fight fire damage to them so they take damage over time. Airwalker that spawns that platform for you. You get the idea. There are a ton of perks that can help other characters that might not have helped this character. So we got characters, we got classes, now we got perks, and of course, signature perks. And that can also just change the game. That can change the character. That will change the fight. Now, how do you decide which ones to use? Well, first of all, I got guides on all of that, and I'm sure a lot of other YouTubers do. But just think about how do you play? So you wanna play with the character for a little bit first, and then think, oh, okay, I'm hitting my opponent a lot with my melee attacks. And I have some projectiles that I use in my kit as well. So that's flammable dock as a perk might be good for you because it says here, your team can melee an enemy after hitting them with a projectile to ignite them. Now, this is only useful if your, your opponent, or you know, you, sorry, or your ally has a projectile. Like if you're playing Jake, for an example, who's got no projectile, this might be a useless perk for you because you need to hit them with a projectile first, then melee hit them. And Jake has no projectiles to hit them with in the first place. But if you're playing like Tom and Jerry or even Joe, Joker that has projectiles and then going into their face and hitting them, this could be a great perk for that kind of play style. If you're in the air a lot and you want to be able to refresh your air specials, then air walker is a great way to do so. Or let's say you want to just counter play. So if you're fighting a Superman or, or a Wonder Woman that just happens to use a lot of armored moves, armor killer here says hitting an armored enemy will briefly stop them from using armor. This is a great counter play to uh, armor heavy characters. Superman, Wonder Woman, even Iron Giant has some. Hit them while they're using an armored move and then that briefly stops them from using armor. So so it could be for the way you want to play or for counterplay. Mess around with your character, mess around with these perks and just kind of feel which ones fit your play style best. Also another thing people don't really talk about is their controller settings. I change my controller settings personally. So I'm on PlayStation and I made my attack button the circle button. A lot of people don't do that, I did. My specials are my X button and my jump is my triangle. I know I play a little bit weird, but that's just how I want to play. Don't be afraid to mess with these settings and feel like, okay, I want for some reason, my thumb wants to go press triangle to jump. Go ahead and make that your jump button. That's totally fine. To be fair, you can also change
change the user interface of the game as well that it helps you and like you know less distractions like i put all the characters faces their icons and their banners and their health beneath the saw rather than on top of the screen personally for me it's less distraction for me in the middle of the fight having those up there when i'm up there juggling my opponent a lot they're just not in my way i like the outline on my character off it's kind of uh i just personally like the way it looks better so mess around with this this will help the gameplay experience just that much better for you so we have our attacks we have our specials we have air attacks we have air specials we have a limited amount of jumps and a limited amount of air specials we got dodges we got armor we got parries we got how to do combos we got what does knockback even mean keep a game plan and strategy in mind for playing solos versus duos where to start with combos where to start with finding a main how to pick your perks mess around with your controller settings mess around with your ui settings so many things to go over and encompass the basics of this game but doing all of these things and practicing them getting very familiar with them will of course up your game in multiverses and make you a better player overall if you found this video helpful even a little bit make sure and give it a thumbs up and subscribe here for more content because we have new videos twice a week and we stream at least twice a week let me know down below who is your main in multiverses and why did you choose them pick it one step at a time and go ahead and click into these videos next for more multiverses news guides tutorials and more